bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So tonight, um, I wanted to take a look at uh, perhaps Brazil's uh, most popular, most successful, long-running uh, reality show, Big Brother Brazil, which is in its 23rd season. Now, mind you, I'm not a big fan of reality shows, but... You know, I have to admit that a lot of things come out in reality shows that reflect issues, ongoing issues of a given culture, right? Um, I mean, you can gauge these things from watching the news, uh, from listening to the music. So I've always said there's, there's a lot of topics that I've approached, you know, first on the blog and now on the YouTube channel where I probably wouldn't cover it. Matter of fact, I would not cover it if it didn't have something to do with the race issue, you know, because... I think when you just speak to everyday Brazilians, uh, watch what goes on, some of the stories that are reported, people's memories, um, dramatic incidents in the lives of just everyday people. And a lot comes out that you may not get in a newspaper. It, you may not see it. It may not make the headlines in the news. It may not be a top story in the, on, you know, on the televised news. But if you listen to enough of these stories, you'll get a real good idea of how things work in a particular culture, right? So as I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race, the only reason I would be interested in a show like Big Brother Brazil <clears throat> is when it does approach something that has something to do with the race issue. And this is something that's come out for years. Um, up until this point, you know, there's been a couple of clearly black women who have won on the show um, but there's a dispute as to whether there's been a black male winner. So, you know, what I noticed over the last few years is that people will say, well, we haven't had a clearly black male winner because some years ago there was a, a light skinned guy, Joao Willis, who won the competition. But a lot of people didn't look at him as black. Like he's, you know, for, for a lot of people, he's not authentically black. And so actually that case and others have brought to the forefront again once this question this this question once again of who do you define as black in a country like brazil when you've got you know just the range of phenotypes is just astounding and i just had to come to my own conclusion in recent years that hey let's just i'm gonna leave it alone you know i'm not gonna uh, uh, you know uh Afro-Brazilian activists have long said Brazil has the largest population of Blacks outside of Nigeria or outside of Africa. While there are purists who believe Brazil is only like 8% Black, you know, and that wide discrepancy is because of people who have varying degrees of mixed race, of which you can tell they're at least partially Black. Some people count them as Black, others say no, they belong in their own category, right? So this is why I say whether it's, you know, people think it's 18 to 20 million up until about, I don't know, 115, 120 million black folks. It's it, For me, it's somewhere in the middle, right? Because you simply cannot, to come up with a black majority country, you have to have a combination of the black and brown populations in Brazil. And Portuguese, they say preto e pardo, right? Now, a lot of those pardos, which can loosely be translated as, you know, a brown or mestizo, there's a great sizable number of those people who would be considered Black, but there's also a sizable amount of pardos who are, for all intents, intents and purposes, they look white or they're just mixed to the degree that you can't really classify them as one race or another. And this is something that I've had to come to this, this conclusion myself after years of saying all paretos and pardos belong in the Black population. I'm like, well, there's a sizable proportion of pardos that belong in the black category, I would say, in my own opinion. Of course, anybody is up to dispute that because I'm going to show you just even in today's uh, video that it's just up for grabs who you consider to be black, how that person sees him or herself and how the Brazilian population as a whole sees that person. So there's a couple things I'm going to do to go through this article. It's actually a mixture of two articles. One is brought to you by... 
the website Noticia Preta. You know, it's one of the uh, top black media websites in Brazil. And the other one is from a website called Upovo, which means, you know, the, the people, the folks. So today, on the 23rd season of Big Brother Brazil, a participant reveals that being on the program, she learned that she was a black woman. Now, that, you know, I know for an American, that sounds kind of strange. Like, how, how could you not know you were a black woman? But again, people have to understand that Brazil is not the United States in that way. You know, whereas the United States push people into the black category, regardless of whatever racial mixture you might have, Brazil pull people away from identifying themselves as black. So a lot of people go through their whole lives. I had one story on the blog that said one, one particular woman only came to see herself as black at the age of 67. There are several other stories throughout the, the blog, and now I'm talking about it on, uh, on YouTube, where people, you know, they might have been in their 20s or 30s when they discover, like, you know, I'm actually black. Uh, they come into this black consciousness after being in certain uh, environments where they're the only non-white person. You know, a lot of people come into this understanding when they go to the university, which for years... Brazilian universities were spaces where you just saw mostly white people or, you know, white people and light skin, almost white mestizos. Right. It's only been, you know, in the last. 15 to 20 years because of the affirmative action programs that you've seen more black brown people uh, making it into the ranks of university student. So. Um, I want to get directly, just go straight into this article today. Like I said, it's a mixture of two. Again, I don't generally watch a lot of, you know, reality TV. And my main focus here is just this 23rd season of Big Brother Brazil has been um, promoted as the season that has the most, no, the largest number of Black participants on the show. And that's coming after, I think it was season 21, where that particular season was said to have the largest number of uh, Afro-Brazilians. Now, it's always going to come into dispute because I'm going to go through some of the pictures here. And, you know, you have your own opinion as to who you think should be considered black or, you know, you say absolutely not. That person is not black. I'm going to just go through the pictures and, you know, you come to your own conclusion because there was, this this was intriguing. And this is this is one of the reasons why I like at least to keep up with Big Brother Brazil because something always comes up that's worth talking about. So before I get into who this woman is, let's just talk about who are some of the people or who are, I think there's 22 participants on the program. And it's being said that there are 11 Black Brazilians on the show. And again, uh, what is your definition of Black? Let's just go through it real quick. These are just a couple of the faces on this. This is what, four? It looks like about nine of the 11 participants. So according to the Nos Negros column of the UOL website, there are 11 Black people who are competing for the final prize on BBB 23. Nos Negros is a column on um, the UOL.com.br website. And it's just a, it's a column for, for Afro-Brazilian writers. You know, most of them are academic um, something that, I, you know, it's a website that I, I, I really enjoy. The website brings some very good information there, you know, historical stuff, you know, just news and everyday situations involving Afro-Brazilians. So anyway, let me just introduce you to some of these participants on the 23rd season of Big Brother Brazil. This first woman is Alini Weirdly. She is 41-year-old artist who is married to the actor Igor Hikili. She has a son with him named Antonio, who is six years old. The couple has an open relationship and Alini also defines herself as bisexual. OK, I featured uh, Alini Weirdly and her husband, Igor, on one of my previous posts about, you know, interracial couples or uh, black love. That you know, was a story I did, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago. So intriguing. She's in an open relationship with a white male. And she's also bisexual. So, I, you know, I guess anything goes in their relationship. Well, maybe it's not right for me to say anything, but apparently they have open borders as to, you know, what goes on in their relationship. Hey, that's <laughs> whatever floats your boat. So Weirdly came to fame after winning on the SBT TV reality show Popstar in 2002. She then joined the band, what, Roji. 
I'm assuming that's how people would say it. I'd say Rouge, but it looks like Hoji. A group of uh, immense pop. Uh, a group of immense popularity in Brazil at the beginning of the 2000s. She has since participated in several musical theater productions. This next woman is Domitila Bajos. She is a model, actress, 38 years old, and an activist who hails from the northeastern state of Pernambuco. Her claim to fame is being the first Black immigrant to win the Miss Germany competition over the 100-year history of the pageant. That was a story that I had, uh, I was trying to cover that story when it happened, but it's been so long, I never got around to it. But, you know, she won the Miss Germany competition, you know. Um, so I'm saying, you know, this is another person, I ask yourself, okay, do you consider her black or you do not? Uh, Domitila recently spoke on her feelings of winning this competition in Germany, but barely being recognized in Brazil. I don't think it's fair that Europe gives me a standing ovation and nobody here knows I exist. I want them to take ownership of my story and make it a tool for change in their lives. So she's just saying, you know, she won this competition in Germany and she would like everybody to hear about her story. But this is something that I find to be common, particularly when I uh, look into the music, Brazil's music industry. You find that a lot of artists have to go to foreign record labels or relocate to other countries to get a fair shake in the music industry. So this is another, you know, this is basically what she's saying. Like she's been recognized in Germany for becoming Miss Germany, but uh, in her own country, she's basically unknown until she, uh, obviously she's on Big Brother Brazil, the 23rd edition. One thing I want to add is that this list of blacks on Big Brother Brazil 23 does not represent who's on the show now because, you know, as it goes on this reality show, people get eliminated. You know, they get sent, you know, pack your bags and get on. So I'm not even talking about who's been eliminated up until this point. These are the people who uh, first appeared on the show when the new season debuted. This is they Fred Nicasio, I think in Portuguese in Brazil, they'll pronounce it Fredji, right? Fred Nicasio is a doctor and a native of Campo dos Goitacasis in Rio de Janeiro. Well, you know, people say Rio de Janeiro. I discussed Fred a few years back when he went viral on social networks when a grandmother had her grandson treated by Fred in the uh, Unified Health System, Brazil's, uh, you could say, universal health care system, which is called SUS. Upon meeting a black doctor, the lady asked to take a picture with him. The woman, like so many other black Brazilians, revealed that she had never been tended to by a black doctor. It's still rel relatively rare to come across black doctors in Brazil. That's what that's all about. Um, Fred has hosted the show Queer Eye Brazil, is currently in an open relationship with his husband, the dentist Fabio, what is it, Gelonese? Gelonese. <laughs> I remember um, some years ago when I came across his story. And um, a friend of mine, we, we were talking about him online and, you know, she had followed some of the things that she had read about him. And I don't know where she saw him, but she was like, you know, I think he's gay. And, you know, honestly, I had never thought about it. I didn't assume anything. I just had never thought about it. I just saw him as the doctor that a black woman wanted to take her picture with him because she had never been tended to by a, uh, by a black doctor in her whole life. And she was probably 60, 70 some years old. And it never occurred to me until I started looking and it's just like there was some telltale signs like, oh, OK. And then, um, you know, later I saw pictures of him with his uh, significant other. So, OK. I know there were some there, there were definitely some black women I knew who were disappointed when they discovered, his, you know, his uh, sexual orientation. But, you know, that's his life. Moving on. Uh, Marvila. Marvila. Marvila, uh, Cassia Marvila is a singer of the Brazilian rhythm known as Pagogi, and she became famous on the fifth season of The Voice Brazil at the age of 17. Marvila got her start in singing in the church at the age of five. This is Gabriel Santana. He's 23 years old. And he got his start on television at the age of 13. His most recent role was on global TV's nine o'clock uh, p.m. soap opera, uh, Pant uh, what is it, Pantanal? in which he played the role of uh, Renato. Now, this is what I'm saying. Now, I, I saw this guy, Gabriel Santana, and, you know, I don't know how he identifies in terms of race. You know, maybe he maybe he does identify as Black. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into that, but I'm just saying on first look, 
I would not have considered this guy black. He's, you know, I, he's clearly of mixed race. Yeah, but. You know, this is a, a discussion that a friend of mine and I go back and forth on. You know, I and again, you know, there's other people who might look at his picture and be like, yeah, he's clearly black. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, he's a little bit he's not white. He's not black. You know, I just have in my own opinion, you know, I, I include a lot of lighter skinned black people in the black uh, category. But there's just certain just his characteristics. I mean, you could tell that he's not white, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, Cesar, Cesar, he calls himself Cesar Black. He's 34 years old and he's from the uh, the city of Salvador in Bahia, northeastern Brazil. It's known as the, uh, it's called like, the nickname is like Black Rome, Homa Negra It's called. It's, you know, it's a historic city. Everybody, Salvador Bahia is one of those places. Anybody who's into the African diaspora, it's a place that you have to visit. You know, I'll just leave it at that. I've talked. You know, I have a post on the blog where I talked about my first experience in Salvador Bahia. It's something, it's a place you just have to behold. You know, if you're into black culture in the African diaspora, you'll feel right at home there. Anyway, Cesar, Cesar Black is a nurse. He defines himself as a person that smiles a lot and is doing well in life. When talking about what he'll do with the prize money if he wins in a reality show, Cesar reveals that despite working hard, he would not quit his job in nursing. He also revealed that if he were to win the prize on the reality show, he would continue working and that being a very ambitious person, he goes after what he wants. Then we have Paula Freitas. Now, Paula Freitas is the woman that I'm actually talking about today. I'll get to her story in a minute. She's from uh, Jacunda in the northeastern state of Pará, and she has a degree in the field of biomedicine, which has allowed her to take care of her family and pay for her brother's education. Her main hobby is dancing. However, she made it clear that her participation on the reality show is because of money. I think it's like, I think people who win on Big Brother Brazil, they get like, I don't know, between 1 million and 1.5 million hey eyes, if I'm not mistaken, something like that. She says, uh, there are people who want fame, who want to change the whole world. I just want this money to change my life, she said. Uh, moving on, this is Sada Alini. She is a psychologist and a diversity analyst that considers herself a very secure, very intense woman, who le which leads her at the age of 25 to sometimes feel that she is in the age range of 38 to 40. She also shared that her interest in Big Brother Brazil began during the 18th edition of the program. She says, BBB was forbidden in my house because of my religion, and I think my passion started because it was forbidden. I only knew about the news coming from the show at school, she explained. This is Ricardo Camargo. He's 30, a biomedical, biomedical engineer. Uh, as he was born in Brazil's northeastern region in the city and state of uh, Aracaju, Sergipe. Um, he left his hometown to take care of residents of a community in the city of Ribeirão Preto, which is located in Sao Paulo State. If he were to win on BBB, he would use the prize money to go to medical school and become a, a geriatrician and move his family to Sao Paulo. He remembers that before passing away, his father asked him to take care of his mother and sister. You know, one thing I just want to mention about that is that you see a lot of people from like the northeast of the country. Like, you know, he's from the state of Sergipe. I already mentioned Pará, I've mentioned Bahia, Pernambuco. All of these are states in the northeast of Brazil. And you find that a lot of families historically from Brazil's northeast east have migrated to places like Sao Paulo, where there's more opportunity. So this continues even today. Uh, Sao Paulo, the state of Sao Paulo, if I'm not mistaken, is like over 45 million. The last I checked, it was like the state of Sao Paulo had more people than the entire country of Canada. So definitely, I've always said Brazil needs to diversify its economy. You know, so, so many people don't come to live in one area of the country. Anyway, this is Bruno Nogueira. He's a pharmacy clerk, also from the state of Alagoas, 32 years of age. He says he is a lively type and that he will generate entertainment in the BBB house. Bruno says that he mirrors Lady Gaga in his life and that every day he wakes up listening to the music of Brazilian superstar singer Anita. Definitely we'll be talking about Anita again pretty soon. <laughs> Her antics never cease. Um, this is Tina uh, Columba. She is a journalist and a model. She's 29 years old, and she's from the African nation of Angola. 
She's been living in Brazil for eight years and chose Sao Paulo as her new home. She's also a marketing analyst and the mother of two girls. She's also a former Miss Benguela, uh, which is again, located in Angola. So she's won a beauty competition. She says she is competitive and promises to be a real handful in the competitions because she has prepared very well. So this gets into the story that I'm talking about with uh, Paula here. As I just mentioned, the story today is actually about Paula, but check out what she's saying here. Big Brother Brazil 23rd edition contestant Paula Freitas said in the early hours of Tuesday the 14th that she understood herself as a black woman on the global television reality show. This conversation took place when another participant, the aforementioned Dr. Fred Nicasio, calls for a meeting by chance between black contestants in the bathroom of the BBB house. The doctor and Gabriel Santana were talking in the outdoor area and then met participants Marvila and Sada Alini in the room. Soon after, Paulo and Ricardo showed up and joined the group. I love it when I'm in the middle of a BBB circle and I see that there's only black people. Look at this, it's really massive and black people of all kinds, Nicasio is her celebrating. So this is Fred sitting here, this is uh, Paula and a few other people from the cast here. Hikado tells when and how he started to consider racial issues. Now, mind you, you know, as I said, this is um, Brazil. You know, people can go their whole lives without even thinking about the race issue, you know. He says, I didn't have that vision. After I went to USP, which is the University of Sao Paulo, which is considered Brazil's most prestigious uh, university, he says, as I went to University of Sao Paulo, my mind, uh, because of friendships, because I went to a private university with very few black people, when you go to a public university, besides classes, there are movements inside the university, said the biomedical engineer. So this is another thing that we've seen uh, with affirmative action policies, uh, taking more black students to the university, they start, uh, you know, constructing a uh, Black students associations and organizations, for example. And a lot of these people who are coming into the university, they come in contact with a race issue and their own racial identity after being in college for a little while. And this is what Fred says, several Blacks discover that they are Black in college, right? I found out here in Big Brother, Paula then revealed. So she's saying right here that because she was called into the room with the other Black participants, it was this, this moment that she comes to conclude that she's a Black woman. Fred asked if it was when he called all the Blacks in the house to have their picture taken at a party and included her in the moment. She says, I swear I found out I was Black here. It was at that time that she said all the Black people, or rather what Fred said, all the Black people come and take a picture, Paula explained. Next, she talked about an episode of racism she suffered during childhood. When she wanted to participate in the very popular Festa Junina at her school, she did, well, she's revealing this, uh, this story that happened to her when she was a child. She says, I remember that I had one situation at school. If there was another one, it was erased from my mind. They told me that I couldn't be the bride of the group because the, the bride had to have light colored eyes and be a blonde. Uma negra do cabelo ruim, meaning a black girl with bad hair, couldn't be the group's bride, she concluded. So uh, let me just talk about, okay, first of all, Festa Junina. If you're in Brazil, any, you know, every year during June from like for the whole month is a celebration. Festa Junina basically means the June festival, the June celebration. You know, this is something that it looks like you, if you just punch in Festa Junina. It's, uh, you know, all the while I was in Sao Paulo, I went to these parties because uh, it's just very traditional. You know, they play like, uh, I don't like folkloric music. And people dress up like what they call jekas. Now, you know, this is what we see here. You know, there's people in the straw hats. And, you know, it, it's, it's a time where you can dress up like what they call jekas in Brazil is like, you know, like what we call a hillbilly. And so, you know, they play the traditional, uh, you know, organ or rather uh, accordion driven music. And it's very, um, what can we say, uh, traditional food that they eat. You know, kids love to go. They do like a type of square dance. You know, they play the music and the kids have fun. You know, you, you get prizes. There's all types of, you know, this is maybe some of the food, the traditional Festa Junina food that you would find. And, you know, it's a big party. You know, um, Festa Junina, it happens during um, 
one of the big parties during Festa Junina is the uh, celebration of the San Juan, which is a, a you know a festival a, a, a festival in celebration of John the Baptist, right? Because John the Baptist is believed that his birthday is supposed to be in that period of time. So this is what she was talking about. A lot of people talk about their memories at Festa Junina. Because at the Festa Junina, you know, the boys and girls dance together. And it's like, I've heard just countless stories from Black Brazilian women remembering their childhood where the boys wouldn't dance with them. Like, oh, I'm not dancing with the Black girl. It's like, okay, you know, this is a place where all the races are supposed to get along. But story after story after story like these come out. And, you know, and it scars people for life. You know, okay, so what is her name? Uh, let me see. What is the lady's name? Paula. So this is Paula right here. So she, Paula went through most of her life probably not understanding herself as a black woman. And I know some of you will be looking at her picture and be like, man, she ain't black. But here's my question. How do we, again, how do we define black? Um, one of the things that I have to mention is that I see that it is the population that's going to determine if somebody's black or not. Now, Brazil has always had this middle category, whether they people call themselves mestizos, meaning mixed, or pardo, meaning mixed, or brown, mulata, meaning mixed, or black and white. But when you look at everything, the way that they're treated in society, it's like either you're treated as a white person or a black person. And so people who look like Paula have been saying for years, maybe it never clicked in their mind when they experienced or, you know, something that somebody put them in a situation that was considered racist. So she remembers being basically humiliated at one of these Festa Junina parties where the people were just like, uh-uh, you know, the 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 bride of, of, of the Festa Junina cannot be a black girl with bad hair. And so what I'm saying, this again, look at what she looks like, right? Now, obviously she's fair skinned. She doesn't have what you would call kinky hair. It's a loose curl going on there. But for people to categorize her as black, as another little girl to define her as black. What does that tell us about the racial situation? Brazil has always said, okay, we don't have just black and white here. We have black and white and we have mixed in the middle. That may be true. I'm not disputing that. Obviously she is of some degree of mixture, but what I'm saying is if people look at her and they consider she's mixed, but they still see her falling more towards the black side, the society is choosing what side she belongs on. Now, the funny thing about Brazil is that a person who is fair skinned and doesn't have very extremely coarse, uh, curly hair, they could go, you know, people from the south of the country would be considered light skinned black in the southern states of Brazil, where it's a mostly where they're mostly white population. They could jump on a plane and go to the northeast and all of a sudden become white. Now, intriguing. This girl says that she became black. On the Big Brother uh, 23rd edition reality show, because all of these years, you know, it, it, again, if you're not familiar with Brazil or just Latin America in general, this might sound strange to you where, you know, black Americans, we know from the time we're born. OK, look, in this country, you're considered a black person. Right. As I've said repeatedly, black Brazilians don't often get this conversation at home. So they'll grow up just seeing themselves as Brazilian and even experiencing racist incidents, it just, it's, uh, oftentimes it just doesn't click that people don't see you how you see yourself. So this is when people accuse Americans of, or you want to import, you know, racial uh, divisions like you have in the United States, we don't have just black and white here. Like, no, nobody said that you just have black and white. But the point is, how does society treat the mixed people? Do they accept them? It's, it's, it's really, it's not something that's cut and dry in Brazil because you get a lot of stories where people, light skin or mixed people just blend in with the white population and they, they get along fine. But then if they should come across some racial consciousness and understand like, wow, you know, I'm the only person who looks like me in this group. And then they start picking up on these little subtle hints, little comments that people make about maybe their nose or their hair or their skin color or something like that. And it leads people to come to understand like, wow, you know, maybe people do see me as black. So again, I'm just reporting the news that's coming out of Brazil because a lot of people, Brazilians will point the finger at the American and say, no, you guys are trying to import your racial ideology here. And the stories like this, stories like this happening over and over again, like, okay, 
I don't need to call her black. But if she suffered this experience with racism from a little kid, from the time she was a little kid, and it's, you know, the, what they say, the coin is dropping now, the, the bulb is going off. She's understanding now, like, OK, people don't consider me white. And this is not what's going on in the United States. This is in Brazil. And this is a story that I'm reporting because, again, I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So don't hate the Yankee American with his racist views. I'm just repeating what uh, what Paula has revealed. So anyway, going to be a lot more stories coming up like this, but I'm going to end the video right here. Um, I'm going to have to catch up with what's going on with, uh, you know, Big Brother Brazil, because there's been a number of people who have been eliminated as of late. So um, I'll probably have a couple more stories to talk about that. But for now, you know, tell me what you think of this article or this video. What did you think about Paula? Um, where you're from, would you consider her to be black or would you just throw her in a mixed race category? You know, Um Definitely want to know what you feel about this video. Drop a comment in the comment section. Consider subscribing to the channel. You know, share this video to get to keep the dialogue going. And definitely, if you want to see more videos from the Black Brazil Today channel, go ahead and uh, push that notification button. So you'll be getting news. Uh, you'll be getting notified when I put up new videos. So with that said, hope to see you all in the next video.